know, what we have is a wonderful find that we have been able to actually go forward and in investigate uh, and excavate so we can have this on display sometime at the Weedon Island Preserve Cultural Natural History Center. It's very significant because of the um, not only the size of the canoe, but where it was found in saltwater and intertidal environment. And we'll be able to really do a lot of interpretation about the early people that once lived here on the bay. Well, this is uh, the first saltwater dugout canoe that, uh, that I've been involved with recovering. I'm just a, sort of an expert in dugout canoes. I've documented about 300 of them. Uh, saltwater canoes typically along the coast don't survive because they either get pulled out of the water and rot away or the surf chews them up. So this one was preserved because it was in the bay or it was affected by the tide but not surf. Well, we just excavated a dugout canoe that's about a thousand years old um, and it's one of the only saltwater canoes that have been found in Florida. So from that perspective, it's very unique. Um, it was not in the greatest of condition, but we got all of it out, and um, we're gonna take it back and preserve it and put it on display so the residents of Pinellas County can see it. The modern story of this 1,100-year-old artifact began when Harry Coran, a Largo resident, was walking along the Pinellas County shoreline of Tampa Bay. I just kept walking along the low tide, and I kept looking and looking and found Basically, um, what it, I thought was some kind of a twig or something, but it was so incredibly straight that I knew it probably was handmade. So that's what really caught my interest, and I knew the area and thinking it's possible that it could be something like a dugout canoe. And I started digging with my hands and looking and find out it was curved. And then really what I really thought I probably was onto something when I found it being charred. What Harry knew was that one of the methods Native Americans used to make dugout canoes before the appearance of metal tools was a controlled fire in the tree. The tree trunk was then hollowed out as most of the burnt wood was scraped away using an adze. Actually, when I showed Phyllis the photographs, that's when things really started moving along. I knew that was a, go a good sign right there that something <laughs> hopefully we come to this point. And uh, the rest is history, as they would say. In December of 2007, a team of archaeologists went out to the site to perform an exploratory excavation of the canoe to get as much information as they could. Measurements were taken. 850, 850. Technical sketches were drawn. And a small sample of the canoe was taken for radiocarbon dating, the process that helps to determine the age of ancient artifacts. In this case, the tests indicated that the canoe was approximately 1,100 years old and dated to about the year A.D. 890. The artifact was reburied where it was to remain until the proper permits were secured and funds were raised for its full excavation and preservation. Three years would pass, but on the morning of March 1st, 2011, a small flotilla of boats filled with specialists and volunteers headed out at dawn to the site for a final excavation of the canoe. Despite an encouraging sunrise, the group knew it was in a race against the Tampa Bay tide and an approaching cold front forecast to bring rain. Time to begin at low tide, the first order of business in the excavation was to build a coffer dam of sandbags around the dig site to help hold back the high tide expected back in a few hours. Then the process of uncovering the canoe began. Soon, the race against the rain was lost but the race against the incoming tide was still on. So work just proceeded undeterred. At over 40 feet long, the canoe would have to be cut into four sections for transport and storage in the preservative tank. 
Slings were threaded under the bow section for lifting it out of the muck. Then the big moment came. Let's just have some dry it and then see what happens. And if it's really stuck, then we'll have to dig underneath it. So on three, ready? One, two, three. Soft. Up. Perfect. Perfect. Excellent. You want to get some more straps just to keep it on the safe side? Yeah. For presumably the first time in 1100 years, a canoe used by Native Americans who lived in what we now know as Pinellas County was moved from where it had rested for centuries. I can sit on it and see what the capacity is. Your back will have to wait. <laughs> Someone help him. Somebody grab, grab, grab one of those straps. Yeah, we have to cut over a little bit. Four a little bit. There you go. Three more. Cool. Perfect. Man, is that cool or what? Work continued to cut and excavate the remaining sections of the artifact. The two rear sections of the canoe were not as solid as the front two sections, and it was thought that they would crumble through the slings, so full sheets of plastic were inserted under them for lifting. Okay, you ready? Yep. Go. Uh, Which boat are you going to? Uh, the far boat. Everybody good? Glowing with the pride of a proud papa, Harry Coran, who discovered the canoe, was there after all these years to see his find finally rescued for posterity. I wanted to make my mark in, in the world, and this is one way of doing it. <laughs> so, but I just think it's really pretty amazing, a pretty amazing find. I never really thought that I'd ever be able to find something like this, but it's so important that things like these be preserved, and they, there was enough interest that they wanted to preserve this. With the incoming tide now having reached the coffer dam, the fourth and final canoe section's turn for excavation came. Small trench on the back. With mission accomplished and the artifacts safely aboard the transport vessel, the coffer dam was dismantled and the site left to once again be covered by the high tide. With the great satisfaction of a job well done, the flotilla and its precious cargo began their return to the boat landing, accompanied by an escort whose ancestors may have accompanied the Native Americans who used the canoe in Tampa Bay. 
The canoe sections were then transported to the tank where they will soak in a preservative solution. Well, from this point forward, we are going to, as you can see, uh, we're washing the, the sections of the canoe, get it ready to go into this large tank that's been built, specially constructed to hold the canoe. The tank itself will be part water and part polyethylene glycol mixture. So as the canoe uh, starts to preserve, the glycol will go into the cells of the wood and replace the water that's in there so that the, the, the wood themselves won't collapse because of the age of the canoe like wood would do if you didn't do anything to it. It's very important that we go through all this process and it'll take over two years to have this uh, accomplished. Local print and TV media coverage of the event was extensive. The very first people of Florida left something behind that has now been found. Today, archaeologists dug up an ancient canoe in Pinellas County. This is a journey back in time. Early this morning, Pinellas County staff and archaeologists begin the careful work of uncovering a piece of history. Workers dug up an 1,100-year-old canoe on the Whedon Island Preserve in St. Pete today. The 40-foot pine canoe was actually... A beautiful sunrise over Tampa Bay Tuesday gave way to the sound of pouring rain. But it didn't stop a team of archaeologists from digging up a part of Florida's past. The story was even picked up in other parts of the country and even overseas. This dramatic archaeological excavation was the culmination of the efforts, resources and collaboration of Pinellas County and State of Florida government agencies, universities, archaeological organizations and the private sector. Financial support was made especially possible with the private funds raised by the Friends of Whedon Island, a nonprofit citizens-based organization dedicated to the protection of Whedon Island Preserve and the education of the general public regarding the unique environmental and historical aspects of the preserve. Another local nonprofit organization of professional archaeologists, the Alliance for Wheaton Island Archaeological Research and Education, or AWARE, contributed resources and expertise to the canoe's excavation and will have the responsibility for several years to monitor, preserve, and organize the interpretive information that makes this project so significant. Finding something like this in, in an area that's been really developed is one of the reasons why it's so unique and so important. Um, a lot of the sites in Pinellas County, prehistoric sites, have been um, destroyed by development. So I think it's a, a really good, tangible expression of our past here. Pinellas County has a lot of early Native Indian uh, cultural resources and we're very very fortunate not only do we have shell mounds and middens that are all up and down our coastal areas but we have great finds like this canoe. Some of the significant features besides the length which what we have is 40 feet long and the back end was broken off so we know that the canoe was actually longer than the 40 feet. It also has a raised bow that would be very indicative of some type of vessel that needed to cross the bay. And it, it also is a pine. It's probably a one solid big pine tree that they cut down to be able to hollow out this dugout. And some of the other significant things uh, actually have to do with, um, of course, it being in the salt water environment, being the first one in Florida that we've actually found in a salt water intertidal environment. It's actually in not too bad a condition. Certain portions of it are very solid still. Uh, the gunnels on the sides have deteriorated, but we knew that. Uh, we have one section of the canoe that is actually uh, a little softer, so we're going to have to work a little harder to put it back together again when we reassemble the whole thing for display. It's, it means a lot to me, actually, because I know the value of um, the, the importance of the Whedon Island culture, and this is just one other aspect of it, uh, the canoe travel and I'm hoping that we will continue on with our, our, our archaeology here in uh, Pinellas County and really um, we have some great plans in place uh, soon to be had uh, with our new uh, establishment of the Alliance for Whedon Island uh, Archaeological Research and Education that we're working with.
a great many of the canoes from the freshwater sites tend to run anywhere around 15 to 20 feet. So this is a much bigger canoe than, than the average. It's, it's a rather unusual specimen being that length. The, uh, there have been other canoes of that length, but they tend to be modern canoes and made of cypress rather than pine. You have to assume that uh, people along the rivers, the lakes, the bays, and uh, in the, even the ocean side uh, used canoes. Uh, what's unique about this one is the actual preservation. The fact that it still exists when so many of the canoes from the bay and the ocean side don't. It gives you a, a sense of the, of the history of the people who were here. Uh, canoes were vital to the, to the lives of, of the people in Florida. In fact, if you look around today, boats are still vital to the people that live in this area. You still have people with their, with their boats for fishing and for transportation, and that's what they were used for in the past. So things change, but still they remain the same. So, if all goes as planned, the canoe will complete its processing in the preservative tank in the year 2013, when it will then be reassembled and put on public display at the Wheaton Island Cultural and Natural History Center. But you don't have to wait until then to visit the center to learn about local archaeology, exhibits, lectures, historical hikes. This was a early Native American working site. This is where they sat probably around a campfire and napped their arrow and spearhead. And special events are ongoing and open to the public. To learn more, visit WheatonIslandPreserve.org or call 727-453-6500. Well, my hope is that the people in this area will come see the canoe when we have it on display, but also read about it and appreciate how the people lived here in the past. I mean, here we are on this wonderful bay and we enjoy it for everything that we can do here, but they, they earned all of their livelihood. Uh, it gave them all the resources, the natural resources they needed. And uh, now we have uh, some examples of this and how they actually succeeded in that.